welcome to An Apple a Day with Dr. Amanda. I'm so glad to have all of you out there and Trina as well. Also on YouTube, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and you also tell a friend about what you're hearing, and especially if they are in the area this, the next two weeks of mental health, especially in the area of suicide. And just know I will be posting at the end always on the podcast and on YouTube, mental health outline numbers, making sure if there's anything and you need something, I want to make sure you have access to that. Okay. So even though you're getting important information today, and that might help you, I always want to make sure that you have that information as well. So again, this topic is navigating and overcoming suicidal thoughts and ideation. And my guest is someone who's amazing. Her name is Trina Olson, and she has an incredible story and is able to really uh, talk to many of you. So you may all relate to what she's gone through um, and perhaps get some amazing things to help you overcome. So Trina, thanks so much for being on the show today. Thank you, Amanda. This is a blessing to be here today. Yes, and it's great to have you. So Trina, I, the first thing is really, what does it mean to, to battle suicidal thoughts, Trina? Really turning your life over to God and him winning the battle for you is really what it means for me. How did battling suicidal thoughts look and sound like to you? Like when, before you had, you know, as you're going through it, like what did that look like? Yeah, it's the time that I really noticed a lot of when I was battling it was we had a lot of accidents in our family where we lost a lot of really close loved ones. And my sister was killed in a drunk driving accident when I was 14 years old. And she was, you know, like one of my best friends and we shared a room together, you know, with her one daughter who was pretty much my age. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just um, amazing time. And then all of a sudden that all got cut short. You know, she's 31 years old. And <clears throat> 11 months later, my dad is killed in a work-related accident. And so, I mean, we had a really happy-go-lucky family, really close-knit family. And then all of a sudden, you know, oh, like, how do you deal with this? And back then, there wasn't teachers that were asking you, you know, how are you coping? There wasn't anyone, you know, there was counselors, but I didn't know anything about going to them and no one ever came to me, you know, even in high school. Because it happened during the fall, you know, fall time. So I was in high school and not anyone had ever really came and asked me, hey, can I help you? Do you need to talk? You know, I was on a basketball team. No one ever, uh, you know, came and asked me, you know, and so I, I wasn't one that was forthright and I did, I was, I was very timid and I was backwards and, you know, and then when I was graduating high school, my niece was killed in a drunk driving accident. She was four years old. So each one of those things just started to spiral. And I was a happy-go-lucky person on the outside. And, and I saw, you know, people going into a psychiatric ward who really didn't see um, them overcome or find victory, you know. And it's not that that doesn't help people, but it, I didn't see it. And I think the enemy really allowed me to see the wrong side. Mm. You know, he didn't allow me to see where, where I could get help. Yeah. And, you know, and he fed that fear. And so in that all, they all had something more to give to life. That, and that's what I felt. Mm -hmm. I felt that my dad, you know, he was provider of the family. Mm -hmm. And without him, you know, we struggled. You know, we, we struggled, you know, taking care of the house. We struggled for provision, you know, and we weren't really a godly family. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have God to look to. My sister was loved by everybody. She was, you know, life of the party. And she just knew how to change the atmosphere in any room and have fun. Mm -hmm. And my niece, I mean, four years old, who doesn't love a four-year-old? Mm -hmm. You know, and they have their entire life ahead of them. And, you know, and, and I got into this spiral that I wish it would have been me. You know, that's how bad I felt inside. And, you know, and I remember even um, trying to commit suicide when I was in high school. And, you know, I tried to strangle myself and, and I was too chicken. And, and I had a really bad mark on my neck for a while. And my one friend asked, you know, hey, what is that? And I just blew it off as something else. I was so afraid for anybody to know who I was and the darkness that was inside of me. And I just stuffed it and stuffed it. Um, 
you know, I, I didn't have God in my life at that moment. And, you know, and in my twenties, I started to know who God was, but I didn't really know him. And even in that, the only outlet that I could find was there was like this anger that would be built up in this, this, there was this darkness that was inside of me. And I found that playing sports was my outlet. And so I could do that well. And so I would play sports all the time. And, but, you know, after a while, that still doesn't fix you. And, you know, and, and things lead to issues. And, yeah, so, um, so there was a huge battle, you know, probably from age 14 to about 38. And, and it was off and on that I continued to have the battle. Well, thank you for sharing, you know, that's a lot of loss, you know, Trina, that you went through in such a short amount of time, and, you know, it's hard to deal with, and, you know, what happened wasn't really normal, right? I mean, it was, you had to normalize what wasn't normal, you know, in your yeah. to losing your dad, you know, your sister, and, you know, and then even all those other family circumstances in high school, and so even in the audience, like, there might be people watching or having had loss like that, right? So you might be um, under understanding or hearing what Trina's saying and be in that same situation where you had your family, right? You had an, what was, you know, what is normal, but what, you know, what seemed to be everything was go happy, you know, everything, was, everybody was there. And then all of a sudden you had a huge shift, you know, maybe just like Trina. And then what also stood out to, you know, so we're, you're, hopefully there's some hope as you're, we're moving on, you know, audience and hearing this story that you can hear some things. But I wanted to also say, Trina, a big thing that you, you touched on that I think is important is saying, well, no one really in high school noticed, like no one, no one knew what to do with, right, mental health or even grief or loss yeah. or high schoolers, right? We have education and teachers, but that piece of, hey, how are you doing, right? Or that piece of like having that wraparound where we have like counselors or people notice that didn't happen, right? And so that also was a big deal and something that has impacted you. So I just, you know, that's important to, because again, a lot of you listening might be, you know, in high school, you might be younger and you can relate to that story. And then that was a long time that, you know, Trina, you had battled, you know, a lot with that suicidal thought. So, you know, again, I'm sure um, as we continue, we'll talk more about that, but that's a long time. So some of you also in the audience may have been um, battling that for quite some time. Did you have anybody to confide in during those hard times of suicidal thoughts? I didn't feel like I could. Um, I feared reaching out to somebody and not finding a victory more than I feared death itself, and that wasn't a good place. Mm -hmm. You know, I feared the psychiatric ward. I had a friend that, you know, sought after help, and but I didn't see him be able to help her. And it doesn't mean that they can't help us. You know, and, you know, later she did get some help. It was just a matter of getting the right fit in her life. And, but I didn't see that back then. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. And that's a good point about the stigma, right, around, like, help seeking. Like, you know, whether it be men or women or, you know, even in psychiatric units or depending, we all have thoughts, right? We're human beings. Yeah. I think that, and I don't know if you agree, Trina, but sometimes, like, you know, it's not always our thoughts. Or sometimes we're in pain. And we don't know where it's coming from. And then everybody sort of makes fun of that, right? They're like, oh, if you hear a voice or if you hear something else, that's, you know what I mean? Like, that's horrible. Like, you might be quacky, right? And we've heard that, like, horrible things like that. And then it gets you afraid to seek help. That's a good point. I don't know if there was a time when you finally did seek support from others from help or, like, if that ever happened in your journey of those 24 years where you were able to share with somebody or not really. No, I even, you know, I had a best friend for 15 years and we were like connected at the hip yeah. and she never even knew how bad I felt. Mm. And I was in a church for 18 years and, you know, I knew about God and I had all these friends and, you know, I was very well connected in the church and, but no one knew who I, who I really was. I really felt like the you know, the song Casting Crowns, does anyone know she's gone down today? I really felt like that was my life. Mm -hmm. That no one knew the darkness that was inside because I was afraid if I shared, it wouldn't end well for me. And I, I just couldn't handle um, 
I couldn't foresee what the outcome would be anything but, um, you know, no help. Yeah. <laughs> you know, help that didn't give you help. Yeah, and that makes sense. And I'm sure it's scary to have to want to reach out, right, and not be rejected, even trying to reach out or people not, mis you know, misunderstanding you. So that's hard, you know, Trina, to have to carry a lot of that by yourself, you know, without ever sharing that. It's a long time. Yeah. What are some possible barriers for people in the audience, like, and stigma? I know you kind of talked about this, but when they're trying to reach out, you know, I know you've mentioned some, but is there anything else that's going on in your mind when you wanted to reach out, but then you kind of went backwards and said, no, I can't do that? Um, you know, I think um, the big thing was, you know, feeling that it was something that you can fix. Mm -hmm. You know, this is your problem. You can fix it. Like, I felt like I had that stigma, you know, that mentality that, you know what, I can do this. I'm, you know, um, everyone's going to look at you like, you know, mm -hmm. you're too weak. Mm -hmm. You know, why can't you get over this? Like, just snap out of it you know that kind of mentality and i felt like you know feeling weak and a feeling that i can't snap out of it you know feeling like i had no value and no one would want to even help me like i really felt like i had not even enough value inside that anyone would want to even help me mm -hmm. that's really you know and thank you for sharing because that's really painful place to be right not even thinking that you have value and I'm just thinking of people out there. This is real. You know, I want you to be able to relate because some of you out there may be on the end, right, of your verge. We're like, I, I am feeling so much pain inside. I have no one to go to, you know, and you can relate to Trina. Like maybe it's been a year, even if it's a month. It doesn't matter the time. Like, you know, any time with this, you know, is painful. So I just want you to be able to hear other people have been through this so they understand you, um, you know what I mean? And also just knowing that there is hope. So... You know, um, when you were, I guess, you know, you tried to seek help, but that seemed like that wasn't as helpful. But when, you know, going through this, and this really goes into the hope, what are some suggestions or something that you um, want to provide to those who are struggling? And perhaps they have like no hope or they don't even know how can I change, like you said, you can't fix it, but how, what are some ways to go about this for people who are struggling? Um, you know, Back then, I, I didn't, I had God, I accepted Jesus into my life, you know, and I knew of God and I knew of Jesus and I knew what he had done for me, but I didn't know that he fixed, can fix you, you know, I didn't know that, you know, he can make you whole. And my suggestion is that, you know, call out to him because he will hear you. And if he saved me, he will save you from it. And I think the biggest thing is going after the lies that the enemy wants to throw your way. And, you know, there's a scripture that, um, it's, uh, let me find it here a second. Um, it's John 10 mm -hmm. and it says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my father's hand. You know, and like the part that I want to emphasize is we can learn to hear his voice and he can really talk to us. It's a relationship with God that I feel um, makes a huge difference in my life. You know, I can't say that I don't still ever have the thoughts because, you know, actually a couple of weeks ago, I had um, when I was thinking, thinking of thoughts, you know, but I have better ammo now to go after it, yeah. you know, um, just to be real with you yeah. because it's, a, it's an overcoming and it's a journey with God and I'm standing on the beach and it would be so easy just to go swim out there until you can't swim anymore and you become tired and you just drown. I really had that thought that, and with battle it, I, I know that there's thoughts in our head, there's our thoughts, there's thoughts from our family and friends and the surroundings around us. The news mm -hmm. is huge with us today, you know, and the enemy and God, and it's learning what are the lies that you're believing, yeah. like going after that lie, you know, 
that lie that day was that I had no value and I was unworthy and I know better than that but it still hit me and it's like no taking captive every thought if it is negative and from the past it is from the enemy if it's positive and from the future it's God God has nothing but future and, and wants to empower you, wants to love you. The enemy wants to pull you back and to cause condemnation. He wants to keep you in that hidden place so you're afraid to step out into who you are. Mm -hmm. And so you have to take authority over that. It's like, no, that's a lie from the enemy. I am worthy. And the, the, the amazing thing about a relationship with God is inviting the Holy Spirit into um into your situation it's like holy spirit come and i need revelation of the father's love right now mm -hmm. and god you are my daddy i need to know truth you know i am valued i have he has a plan for me that i don't know about you know jeremiah 29 11 grabbing a hold of some scriptures and letting them be your throwing star to combat that enemy and every time that negative thought comes it's like no that is not from God. God, give me truth, truth yeah. places. And, you know, that's one way to battle it now. You know, I didn't have that then. I didn't have the knowledge. Um, I didn't, I wasn't in a church at that time that really knew how to, to explain to me that God talks to you. Yeah. And really understanding that God wants to talk to you no matter where you are in life, whether you're a baby Christian or, or an elite Christian that has been walking this for all their life he wants to talk to us and he wants to have a personal relationship and that's really good and, and trina i appreciate your honesty your vulnerability and sharing that yes you know you've overcome a lot of this but when something comes up you know knowing more deeply who you are right and being able to say hmm like what thought is that right and maybe you know like you mentioned some people again like if you're of you know beginning in the faith or maybe you're not of the faith you don't know what this looks like Trina sharing like about how God changed her life and you know even as you're maturing right even as you're becoming who you are sometimes these things come up but you know being able to say hmm is that really true right is that really who I am and and just being encouraged because again for those of you listening you know, sometimes as you're going through this, it's a process, right? Sometimes, yes, we may have a huge transformation, but even in those transformations, and I believe this, that we're constantly becoming new and we're constantly changing. And sometimes those things may come back, right? A thought. And we then it's like us saying, okay, that's not really who we are. So that's really good, Trina. Yeah. Um, thanks for sharing that. And so also looking at this, is there any other wisdom tips or anything else? You know, I always say like a, a wisdom tip or, you know, resource or anything else that you think would be important for the audience to hear about your journey or ways to overcome that, come, come suicidal ideation or thoughts. Yeah. You know, I was a Christian for 18 years and I didn't know that God talked to you. I didn't know about healing. I didn't know about the gifts of the spirit. I didn't know anything, but you know about salvation really mm -hmm. and i had a i had a reading from three you know um i graduated with an eighth grade reading level mm -hmm. i learned to cope and i'm learning that i had dyslexia and you know and comprehension was not my forte so reading the bible wasn't a good plan mm -hmm. it, it didn't work out real well and especially trying to read Job, you know it didn't work out real well for me but the biggest thing is is you know part of my story was that so I was this Christian for 18 years in name only, and I didn't know who God was. I didn't know um, him in an intimate relationship. Mm -hmm. And in the midst of that, I decide that enough is enough, and I'm, I'm done with what my, my life was about. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired for, for um, 12 years. I had medical, um, so many medical problems that, you know, I had two folders this thick of medical issues that doctors couldn't fix. And it was another medicine, another medicine, another medicine that was, and, you know, I had um, ankylosing spondylitis of the hip and the spine. I had um, celiac sprue, you know, where you can't eat any wheat, rye, barley, or oats. And I had a really bad case of it um, where I would vomit and diarrhea, really bad, extreme fatigue, horrible. I had MS, multiple sclerosis symptoms, really bad. 
I mean, it was, I mean, I, I'm not kidding. I had a list, this, you know, um, two folders this thick. And, and so after a while, you become sick and tired of being sick and tired. But in the midst of me giving up, God showed up in my life. And I believe that you don't have to reach the breaking point that I did. Mine was an embankment where my car was about ready to flip. And I'm thanking God that he finally gave me the courage. And I believe in that moment, he's like, you're not giving me credit for this. Mm. And he literally pulled my car off an embankment that day and turned my life around. Wow. Filled my car with the Holy Spirit. Wow. I felt different. Depression went away in an instant. Mm. That could have happened in another way. I could have called out to him laying in my bed some night. You know, I could have called out to him, you know, in the midst of my work, you know, at the keyboard, at the computer, wherever you are, you can call out to him. You don't have to find that breaking point in your life mm -hmm. and just say, God, I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. I need you. Mm -hmm. And he will fill you with your, his presence. And, and why I'm so adamant about the, the baptism of Holy Spirit is the presence of God. He, that gives you revelation more than knowledge. Knowledge can't fix you. But the revelation in the presence of God can actually heal your heart. And that working with someone who is trained in counseling or someone who really understands what you're going through, that can change your life drastically. I didn't have that. And I really, really see others being able to to get that now, you know, and, and I wish I would have had it, you know, um, 18 years earlier, or 25 years earlier, it would have made a huge difference in my life. Yeah. You know, um, the biggest thing, you know, I guess the biggest takeaway is no matter where you're at, cry out to God because he can help you ask him to put people in your life. <coughs> Sorry. Ask Ask him to put people in your life that can help you and he'll show you, you know, there's an amazing evangelist that he was crying out for God and he walks past a phone book and what's the chances of, of the, and he was not a Christian. He didn't know anything about Jesus. And he sees in the, the phone book is like, I think he flips it open and he flips open to like churches and the one church that he highlights. God uses that pastor to help him transform his life. It was an, it's an amazing story. You know, that simple. God can show up that quick. And he didn't know God, yeah. but, you know, he went on a journey. And this man stood beside him, didn't condemn him, you know, helped him find who he was and helped every time he said, no matter what you do, your eyes need to be on Christ, mm -hmm. you know, and that's one of the things that I learned is I can't have my eyes on people or things. So no matter who you're talking to, you always got to go back and put your eyes on Christ and ask him, what is he saying? Because, you know, people, wounded people, wound people, and we've dealt with that all our life, but it's time that we take our responsibility and grab a hold of our own life. And it's like, say, you know what? Enough is enough. God, I can't fix me. The world can't fix me. What you can. Yeah. So that's powerful. You know, and I, I thank you, Trina, you know, for sharing that and for other people out there. And I also want, want you to know, you know, for, you know, Trina had shared how God had radically changed, you know, shifted her life. And for some of you out there, you may know the Lord, right? And he may be changing you. And again, every story is different. I want you to encourage you that it's okay. You know, kind of like Trina was saying, it may not take all that time. She had that defining moment, but it's okay to seek God as he heals you. And it's also okay to get some counseling, you know, while you're doing that. So some of you out there, if you don't have support, I also want to encourage you, God can use counselors, you know, he is the wise counselor. And some of you who are not sure of the Lord, right, you may not know, you know, make sure you get help. And hopefully you're hearing, maybe for the first time, you know, what God can do. You know, Trina was sharing, 
how God changed her life. And perhaps out there, you've never heard of him or, you know, had an encounter with him. And some of you out there may have different experiences, right? You may have been hurt. You may be hurt. You may be in pain. Maybe you were, we left a church that, you know, again, we're human beings that was painful. I mean, I'm just encouraging as you hear this story that perhaps you have different backgrounds, but that you're, you can relate to this. And that, again, hopefully that opens your heart up to understand, you know, what Trina's saying and how that's helped her. You know, I know there's a range of different things out there. So yes, God can totally, you know, in my, you know, our experiences on here, you know, Trina and I, you know, can change our lives, but some of you may not have felt that yet. And we just want to encourage you that he is, you know, listening as you cry out and it's okay if you are going so, through some very severe things to get the help you need as well. So, you know, he, he does do that as well. Is there anything else, you know, that's coming to mind to empower our audience? Any other wisdom tips that might um, help them out there? I think one of the greatest chapters of the Bible, um, one of the greatest books of the Bible is the book of John. But the chapter, chapter 17, like it really tells you how much, it's Jesus' last prayer before he goes to the cross. Mm -hmm. And it's how much he really loves them. You know, in, in the midst of it, you know, he, um, there's, um, let me find here, John 17, there's just a little segment of it that I just wanted to share. Um, starting in 15, it says, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, and he's talking to the Father, but my prayer is to protect them from the evil one. Mm -hmm. They are not of this world, even as I am not it, it of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into this world, I have sent them into the world. For I go down. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me, I am in you. May, may they also be in us that the world may believe that you have sent me. Like there's so much in this scripture, but that we are one with the Father. We are one with Jesus. We're not alone. You're not alone. Like the Holy Spirit brings it all together. And if you look at it this way, like I always love bringing a funny scenario in to help make things lighthearted. And every time you think of a s'more, you'll think of God because um, I was at a campfire one time and they did s'mores and they did an analogy. Mm -hmm. And this is amazing. So the graham cracker is God, the father. And Jesus is the chocolate. He's the sweetness. And the Holy Spirit is actually the marshmallow that brings everything together. And you can't have one without the other. Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, allow the goodness of God to just help define who you were created to be. Because who you know you are is not who you're created to be. And, you know, we're not a failure. We're not um, lonely. We're, we're not an eyesore to the world. You know, um, you know, I felt like I was a failure. I felt like, you know, how many people are a computer programmer and you're in a junior level for five years and yeah. you never make it out of junior level? That's not a good day. You know, everything that I put my hands to seemed like it was just an epic fail, mm -hmm. you know. And so, you know, who you were created to be is not who you see in the mirror. Who you were created to be is an amazing son or daughter of the Most High. And I don't care what religion you are in, God Almighty is the one who truly can help un um, unplug you from that place where you're at. And John 17, like, you know, just dive into it. And I'm believing that even if you just give a little bit of, of thought into it, God will do the, the rest. There's a scripture in Second Kings, uh, the prophet Elisha, and his servant is saying, you know, look, look at all these enemies around us. That they're, they're so huge. We can't battle this. And Elisha asked God to open his eyes to see what was there spiritually. And there was, and, and his eyes were open and he's like, wow, all these angels and angelics were, you know, 
were going before them and to battle this battle that they were about ready to wage. And I feel like we can really bring it into our own life because the battle we see is not of flesh and blood. Mm -hmm. It's not of the person who hurt you or, or, you know, the job that you lost. It's not about, you know, your best friend that stabbed you in the back. It's not about your parents that hated you ever since you were born. It's not about any of that because that's not who defines you. Those words that people spoke of you don't define who you are. God defines who you are because he, he knew you before you were born in your mother's womb and he has loved you to life and he created you and he never meant for harm to happen to you. But he, he walked through it with you. And I know if you can grasp that, that he's in the midst of the worst place you are right now, I believe that he will help pop you out of it because he wants victory for you. And he spoke these words to me when he turned my life around that day. I literally, I don't know who I am, who I was anymore. Like that person who was on the embankment didn't know. I didn't know that person anymore. When he turned my car around and he did a 180 in my life, I was starting to learn who I was becoming. And I was learning, you know, that I was an amazing daughter of the most high. And he didn't care that I was a screw up. He didn't care. He said, he said these audible words to me. I mean, an audible voice sounded from heaven that day. And he said, you can continue to be stupid, but I have a plan for your life. Mm -hmm. You know, if a parent would say, you know what, it's okay to, to continue to be stupid, but you know, you're going to find your way through life. And I believe that in the midst of that, he was saying two things. You can take it as stop being stupid, or you can take it as, you know what, it doesn't matter if you continue to be stupid, I'm going to find a way to show you how much I love you. Mm -hmm. And I just, you know, John 17 really, really helped me find that I am so loved by the Father that Jesus, in his last moment, prayed a prayer that included me. Mm -hmm to be a part of him and, and the father. That's how much he loved you. Thank you, Trina. That's incredible. You know, so again, that powerfulness and even for God now, yeah, you know, like God can be real with us, you know, and he was like, in that moment, this isn't your best, cho my best choice for you. Right. And, and, and yeah. Trina's, in Trina's language, she probably was calling herself stupid. And he's like, uh, there's a better way. You don't have to do this, even though, you know, it's like that. So again, you know, God will speak to you in your language, right. To know, yeah exactly because he knows what you're thinking or like how you're doing that to get you to be like whoa and so thank you trina you know that's powerful so those of you out there hopefully you know we i will be posting hotlines you know get counseling seek out help i know you might not feel like that but it's encouraging god is a great help if you're still learning who he is seek help you know and if you don't have a safe person please reach out we want you here you matter like trina said your love beyond all all understanding you know we love you and we want to see that you got encouraged, you know, like, you know, our, my hope is that you hear this, and you're like, okay, if, you know, Trina can walk through this, and yeah, she walked through it 24 years, right, and sometimes we may walk through things longer, but then we can share with you, hey, there is hope, you know, Trina had that, you know, those, that amazing encounters, you know, healing, and her life is, you know, now just so touched by God, and there is hope, and I know, probably some of you can't even see that yet but you know we want to hope for you and we're, we're hoping that you take one of these wisdom nuggets that trina gave you today and that you are loved so if you like share and subscribe thank you trina for your story today um, and you know we will be posting um i'll be on podcast some of these important descriptions hotlines information and also on the youtube so be well everybody and trina thank you so much Amanda. Yeah.